The VGC Regulation F format has been absolutely crazy. Week to week, it seems that the metagame moves at light speed, with the previous week's top cut not being reflective of the metagame the next week. Many players have struggled to keep up with this and are consistently updating their teams. Is this a good thing or a bad thing, and what can we expect in the future? Will it ever settle down? Let's discuss that today, but if you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more competitive Pokemon content. But first, psych, there's no gamer subs ad here. This is actually a quick update that the daily content grind isn't very fun for me, and I've decided to make an adjustment. You can start to expect one major topic video that's super well edited and interesting every Monday starting next week, much like the content I've released in the past, and also one edited battle video every Wednesday. Unfortunately, the lack of daily content besides my live streams means that I'll likely be collecting a bit less ad revenue, so if you want to support what I do over here and help me pay the editors during this transition, you can check out my Patreon page and join it for as low as $1 a month with some cool bonuses, or become a channel member by clicking the join button below getting the same bonus content. With that update out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the video. Thanks for the support. All right, I'm with Main here. Main, how are we doing? How you doing, everybody? How you doing? What are we talking about today? Uh, this, this very, very, uh, interesting meta that seems to change from tournament to tournament very, very drastically, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So there, all right, here's the thing. Um, in previous meta games, it's felt like we have one, maybe two tournaments where we're figuring out what's good, what isn't good. And then from that point on, the meta sort of stabilizes. We are currently in week five we're about to hit week five of regulation f vgc or e are we in e uh ef no regulation e -F, f yeah f so regulation f vgc and the meta won't stay still it's like a, it's like trying to wrestle like a pig right it's like it it, it just it, it keeps squirming out and it, it changes so we're going to talk about that today um this is the meta that people in my comment section who don't play a lot of competitive pokemon really wanted the meta where no one knows what's good uh and every and each top cut seems to be completely different barring the last two winners but yeah, let's talk about that you know if you enjoyed leave a like subscribe your notifications and uh let's just get into it so the beginning of regulation f was really interesting because in the first tournament going into portland people had a couple of metagame predictions one the first one was that tornadus urshifu would get a little bit weaker because of Raging Bolt. And what ended up happening is while the tournament was won by a Raging Bolt, Raging Bolt actually wasn't super duper common. It was like on a lot of teams, but yeah. it wasn't like on, you know, half the teams to counteract the uh yeah. like on the on the charts, I think it was like on the bottom half of the top 12 usage versus the top half. Yeah. And what ended up happening is like this first tournament established, like, yeah, it's like a decent Pokemon. Um, it also established that Lando I is still like a decent Pokemon. Uh, we saw a few Latias, which was predicted to be pretty good into this format, but long term, Latias just hasn't stuck around. Like we see a few, you know, Latias is still like, if, you, if you're wondering why Latias is like a, a good Pokemon, it was supposed to be a decent offensive option because it's a dragon psychic type. It had uh, Ice Beam to one shot Landorus I, and it also walled Landorus I. And we can kind of attribute the fall of Latias to the, the fall, fall of Lando I. <laughs> yeah, the the biggest fraud in the format, in my opinion, is Lander's I right now. Yes, yes, it is. Because if you also, look, the next tournament, to, um, it was supposed to also wall off like Urshifu because it takes full time and certain strikes. That's why people gave it the Rocky helmet. Yeah, yeah, and then people switched um, to Urshifu Dark. <laughs> Yeah, people switch to Urshifu Dark and said, "Oh, this wicked blow." Yeah, just <laughs> and then it just dies. Uh, so yeah, so the very next tournament, Portland, and by the way, or not not Portland, Charlotte. By the way, I am a, a victim of this format shifting completely. Um, if we look at the results, I finished top sixty four at uh Portland with Araquanid, right? I believe I was like sixty. Where am I? I'm right here. I'm sixty first. So I finished. Top 64 with Araquanid at Portland. And I was like, wow, this team is awesome. I love this team. I'm going to make a few changes. I'm going to switch like Power Gym on Fluttermain to Parish Song to fix the Dondozo matchup. Because guess what? Dondozo got second at this event. You know? <laughs> no um, Dozo for you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, ah, we'll just fix that, that Dondozo matchup and I'll be good to go for Charlotte Regionals, which are two weeks from now. And I said, all right, you know, I got my two practice in. Two measly weeks. Two measly weeks. Nothing happened really. Like, there was no major events. There were some online events, right? 
But those online events were enough to say, uh-uh, new format, new format. So to I pull fair, up. Them online tournaments be huge. I know, I know they are. So I pull up to Charlotte Regional Championships with the exact same team. And you might be wondering, Marcos, where's your name in top 128? Oh, <laughs> where's your name in top 256? I don't know, because I didn't even make top 256. That team became fraudulent immediately. <laughs> My team had no matchups into anything. I finished 5-4 and I missed points. Uh, and that's the first time I missed points since like last year, which was pretty frustrating. I was like, dang, I really wanted points. I felt so good going into this meta, you know? And then everything changed. And what changed? Buddy. Everything, Urshifu everything dark. changed. Urshifu, everything yeah, dark like game. everything changed. Look at this top cut. <laughs> Look, hold on, look, look at this top cut, right? What do we see? We see, oh yeah, I know, you have um, Chen Te, Chen Pao, uh, we have uh, a Don Dozo, we have this really cool like Reggie Drago team with a Screamtail, so, we have more like Chen Te. Uh, we have- more so changed though, what? other than like Urshifu Dark coming in, is more so like the disappearance of Entei um, Pao. Because your didn't team disappear. was really good into that. Yeah, it didn't disappear necessarily, we still see it like well, not in top cut, oh, but uh, oh, uh, oh no, check check Charlotte Day Two. Yeah, well, Charlotte uh, Day Two. Yeah, <laughs> Charlotte Day Two. There's a couple of them. There's like one, uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> check Charlotte Day Two. Yeah, there's Go no. Go down to the usage stats. Go down Where to the usage it? stats for Char for. Uh, oh yeah, Chen Chen Pao wasn't even on there, was it for Day Ooh, Two? They, they won. Oh, they're they gone. Two, they're gone. Them. They're just gone, gone dude. And Arachnid Fridge Rat dominates that team yeah so that it was meant to farm those teams right that team just didn't exist anymore so i like didn't have a matchup so yeah the format shifted and what did it shift to well people looked at the results of charlotte and they said ah, i would like to beat this hyper offensive chente team that uh won the event and i went you know the team that i was trying to farm um and i went oh yeah this will be fine so everyone said like i want to beat that right ferrigiraf skyrocketed in usage if we look at like the usage stats for ferrigiraf in this one we see top 12 pokemon day two not there yeah top 12 pokemon day, day one 12 and then this one we look at the top 12. where's for a giraffe for a giraffe 16 percent 16 percent 20 percent day two meteoric explosion yeah just a straight up proof meteoric. of concept that for a giraffe is like supreme in this format first and in like, a blood moon back to that even uh yeah. even in dd is at 17 so people took priority blocking very seriously yeah um, something else you need to note is, uh, oh, there's a Regigigas Weezing player here. Hold on. Sorry, that just caught my eye. Hey, what's <laughs> up? Right. Nice job. Top 128. Cool. Um, so something that you need to note is that it wasn't just for Regigigas that skyrocketed. I already did a video on Regigigas, not Regigigas, on Earth and the Blood Moon for Regigigas. But this duo is so oppressive and hard to stop because of how easy it is to get the Trick Room off, whether you have a Follow Me Ogre Pond or a Fake Out Parting Shot Mon like Incineroar next to the Ferrigiraffe, you just get it off and then Ursula Blood Moon hits the field, Helping Hand Hyper Voice, Helping Hand Hyper Voice, Helping Hand Terra Normal, Blood Moon, you get one shots, right? So that's like the big breakout star of this tournament. And everyone's like, man, look how good it did. It got second, it got fourth, it got sixth. You know, Wolfie won the whole thing without it, but he also had a Ferrigiraffe. So like, we know like, all right, it works. Something else to note, Psy Spam. It's sticking around. There's a decent amount of like, um, in DD plus uh, Iron Crown teams, Iron Crown. and that's because what does Psy Spam do well into? Does well into stuff like Chente, you know. Uh, but it also yeah. farms other things. Gouging Fire also had a breakout performance in this event. The King Gambit hit Gouging Fire that you know me and Main, you know, we we made a video yes, about before we, it was a thing. We made a video about that before, before it was even a thing. Also, Will, uh, Will Tank is actually the first guy to, to prove it. Basically, what happened is I made a video about it. <laughs> Pretty much, Will Tank might have seen it. Uh, Will Tank brought it to a tournament, popularized it. Will Tank is the the pioneer of King Gambit Gouging Fire, in my opinion. But yeah, so sure. he took it, piloted it. A lot of people picked up on it. And then at this event, it had a huge breakout. Ashton Cox got like 18th. We see Ragav at 13th. It's just like this combination of Gouging Fire, King Gambit, um, and a bunch of like offensive tools that can also take advantage of the Howl along with like a support mod like Amoongus. Super reliable. Like it, it's a really easy team to pilot. You, you have a lot of like lines into different things. And yeah, then speed booster is so hard to break. Yeah. So like those are the big things you need to keep in mind. Also, in D not in DD, uh, Fluttermane plus like Chi Yu came back a little bit. Like we saw that in a few teams, yeah. uh, which hasn't really been a thing since Reg C. But 
Yeah. Fast forward. <laughs> One, five, seven days. Seven days later. Where's the blood moon? <laughs> Where's the blood moon? <laughs> Where's the blood moon, Mansley? <laughs> and like, you could, you can maybe make the argument that like the European meta was developing in its own way before this tournament. But even then, both regions still kind of look at what the other region is playing a little bit. Oh, yeah. Um, so you expect somebody to do well with it. Like, hey, that did really well over there. I know people on my side of the lake are not keen to it. I'm going to bring it. Nope. 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 Not even that many for your giraffes, if we're being honest. Yeah, no. There's Wait, is there only one? <laughs> there's one. I don't know <laughs> why I thought there was one. Cut. There's one in top cut, and it won the event, right? It's, yeah. it's the same team. So Wolf won this event, by the way. But... um. Uh, Antonio Sanchez ran the same team uh, and also won this event. Shout out Antonio Sanchez. Great job. Um, also, all those urgent moves you see, I think only one of them is water. It's the winning one. I think the rest are dark. Wait, hold on. Let me see. So this one would... No, this one's water, right? The winning one was Yeah, water. the winning one. The winning one is water, but I think the, most of the rest are dark. Edu was running dark. This one, probably dark. Dark. Yeah, look dark. at the day two usage stat. I think... This one was water, actually. That might have been because of the no, glass. That one's nope. dark. Uh, <laughs> one of these was water. I know for a fact one of these was water. This one. That one's water. Yeah, this one's. But look at the water. look at the uh, day two usage stats for for Liverpool. The chart. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Urshifu Ooh. Rapid Strike got knocked off the chart for the first time since like what? Like, <laughs> like since it came out, it's never since not it came been. Out, it's never not two. been like third, basically. Yeah, top five at least in day two all the time. Yeah. So like the next trend that we see is the fall of like Blood Moon stuff and the rise of bulky balance, but also this hyper offensive balance that uh, Wolfie and Antonio were running. Obviously, it still works. But another thing that was rising in usage are these teams that are effectively just Reggie Steel, not stall, but Reggie Steel win con teams, because there's a few of them. David Cognetta, uh, despite losing two Pokemon, uh, I uh, got top eight with the Reggie Steel. Dude, a top eight with four Pokemon for an entire tournament. Insane, it's crazy. Right? It's but crazy. Yeah. So the reason these Reggie Steel teams function so well is because the entire point of the team is Reggie Steel is a win con into um, physical attackers. Everything. And most of the format, I don't know attackers. if you noticed, is physical attackers. We have the Ogre Ponds, we have Incineroar, we have Excalibur, Urshifu, and each team has one to two special attackers. You see like a Fluttermane, uh, and uh, Ferrigeref doesn't really count as a special attacker into the um, Registeel matchup. It gets like hard walled, like that sort of thing, right? So you run these hyper offensive beasts, you know, Urshifu, Rillaboom, um, you know, Raging Bolt, and you just remove the special attackers. Urshifu removes Fluttermane, it removes... Um, Glamora. That's kind of just what it needs to is Fluttermane, really. It just yeah. one shots it, and so does the Urshifu. Yeah, and, and then and then Registeel just comes in and it's like, all right, time to set up. And yeah. then you win. <laughs> then Registeel Incineroar is just impossible to break at that point. Yeah. I, I forget which Pokemon he lost. I'm pretty sure he lost. I'm pretty sure he kept his Urshifu, but I think he lost his Incineroar and his Rillaboom. Yeah, that, that's really important because Rillaboom is the is the recovery. And yeah. Incineroar is the is the intimidate. Yeah. Those are very, very important. Like the Reggie Steel has leftovers and the Cresselia has like Lunar Blessing, but like you really want like the Grassy Train and stuff. So, bro, using basically only an Urshifu, removed every single special attacker and still won with this guy. Keep in it mind, crazy. when you have four Pokemon too, your opponent knows exactly what you're going to bring. It's just a matter of what leads, you know? Yeah. Uh, and and he like still you won. have a taunt. Like you should just auto lose the taunt with this team, which I'm sure people had, but it didn't matter. Yeah. Uh, I think the one, you know what the most consistent Pokemon is in this entire, like, format shift, funny enough? What, Ogrepon? Glamora. Well, Ogrepon too, but Glamora. Yeah. Like, yeah, Torn Glamora. Glamora. Been, like, middling, very middling usage. Uh, but it exists but not in all of the top off, cuts. But it exists, yeah. Actually, uh, was there... Your beam is really good. Yeah, it, when you're not missing, obviously, but... Yeah, no, like, th yeah. this format won't stay still. Uh, and I want to say, I made the, the meta call in a video a few a few days back saying like oh yeah you know um you know ting lu is gonna pop oh, off yes ting lu would have had much better results if it didn't get taken away from people's teams yeah so there are actually these two players i wanted to make a full video about it but i didn't feel like stoking the, the flames uh the flames, basically yeah. it was pokey alex and uh who was it um 
Eric what is Rios. It? Eric yeah. Rios. Eric Rios, yes. They're running this Kamoa Ting Lu Porygon 2 team that it's it's sort of like Registeel, where like the whole uh, idea is like you remove the special attackers and then you like win with the Kamoa. Um but as it turns out, their Kamoa was cloned. Wherever they got the Kamoa from, they claim to have gotten from the same source. He cloned his Kamoa, or not his Kamoa, his Tinglu. Not the Tinglu. This Tinglu. Tinglu. Because I think the same, yeah. the same thing happened to a couple other guys. I yeah, think. it was it was Tinglu. So they cloned the Tinglu. So it was the exact same player ID and trainer ID, which is obviously impossible. Um, everything lined up, which means that it was just like a, an exact copy. Um, and they, they found it and said, oh, you know, this is hacked in or cloned or whatever. That's against the rules. And they got the Mon taken away from them and they got DQ'd immediately. So the two Ting Lu's that were going to make it to day two, we didn't get to see how far they would actually make it in the tournament as a whole. But that's still just crazy. Which is, yeah, which is kind of also a, a, a good-ish thing because um, it's going to show another interesting shift. I think a lot of people are going to try to sneak Ting Lu into the next event. Oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that Ting Lu is going to be the next wave. Um, I, I Here's the thing. I, Tinglu this, should have been the first wave of this regulation as soon as Radiant Bolt got announced. Yeah, this format's been shifting rapidly, like every single week. Just one week it's different, next week it's different, next week it's different, right? You know what kind of happens? I forget what it's called. I think it's called like carcinogation or something. You know how like all animals eventually become crabs over billions and billions of years or whatever? Or millions. Yeah, they all become the same thing. Yeah, so that happens with formats too. Um, eventually slowly if you let a format go on long enough everything becomes balance and i think that's what we're yeah. seeing like you because know iron hands is picking up a little bit he iron hands is picking up a moon you know is what picking forces up. iron hands to pick up what first food dark and ting lu exactly. forces iron hands to become relevant terra fairy ting lu also like down. you know does well into hyper offense um yeah like <laughs> This format's it's, wacky, dude. It won't stay. It's gonna become balanced. And it's crazy because the format ain't got that much time left, right? Isn't NAIC like a different format starting like that? And that's like a few N months away. Yeah, <laughs> NAIC is a different format. I think EUIC is the last form or the last uh tournament of this format. I might be wrong. But yeah, this format should end in May. So yeah, we have so to figure that out. Make your make your adaptations now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What, what do you think is going to rise? Like, I'm saying Ting Lu Amoongus. Like, Ting Lu Amoongus, I don't know about Iron Hands. I think Ting Lu Amoongus and Cinder are going to be like a big combo. So, I think I think Ting Lu isn't going to get a fair shot at Black Smoke. I think some people are going to try to force it in, but like, kind of how Incineroar in the first um, tournament of this format, it had a lot of usage and it had results, but a lot of people kind of just forced it into their team without actually knowing how to play it. And I think something like that might happen to Ting Lu. I look for Ting Lu to win, like, do really, really well the following tournament because maybe one or two really good Tinglu players pilot it really high yeah for uh for knoxville but yeah i don't know i i just i want the format to settle because i the way that like i build you know like i like to see what's good and then build like a team that's sort of halfway an existing archetype and then throw something in there as like a, a counter pick right that's how mm -hmm. i build I can't do that because <laughs> I don't know what to counter pick. <laughs> uh, also, yeah. you got to point out the Bax Caliber here. What's he doing? Bax Caliber may actually pick up as a, as an answer to Tinglu as well. So yeah, we'll see. Which what, also how, encourages more Iron Hands. What caused Bax Caliber to rise actually? Because let me let me think. So Bax Caliber uh, got second here. It does. It's Terra Poison. It was. Um. Blade Rush, Swords Dance, Eye Shard. It's the old Bax Caliber set. Uh, <laughs> it's like the first one. It's really Clearly strong. Like. Also, oh. like a lot of teams tend to be weak to Rillaboom, and like Rillaboom versus Rillaboom is not really a check. Yeah. Uh, and like also, if your team doesn't have a way to deal with um, Lando Eye, because like even though it's not super prevalent, I do think that it's relevant enough if you're using stuff like Heatran, Rillaboom, and Ogre Pond Water, which all can kind of add to like yeah. Lando Eye's moves. Um, you having know. something like the the uh, Bex Caliber really helps patch that matchup. You know what I think might have caused Bex Caliber to do so well at this event? What? Uh, in Sin, everywhere. It can switch in out of Flare Blitz. It doesn't care about Intimidate. It's an attack boost because of Thermal Exchange. Um, also, you know, the Chi Yu's are coming back, so you can, you know, just Terra Poison in front of Chi Yu Flutter, take a Heat Wave, and then one shot one of them. It could just be like that, like, you know, fire types come back. Also, it has a really positive matchup in Ogre Pond Hearth Flame. Fire. 
yeah. yeah. If, as long as it as long as it survives, that that. We'll yeah, no. It. Well, I mean, you but run I mean, it next to an, you run it next to an intimidate user and also like the heat yeah. So like that sort of makes sense because like, look at look at Vexcalibur stats, dude. Vexcalibur's really physical high. defense it's one fifteen ninety two. He can eat that hit. Palafin yeah. next up, man. Uh, I love it when like the new Pokemon of a generation that are clearly good get a chance to like thrive throughout the generation. Like Max Calibur seems to be the one capable of doing that right now. Um, mm -hmm. like Palafin obviously died out, but with the Urshifu declining, maybe Jet Punch being so strong <laughs> and a way to dodge the uh, to dodge the uh, the Raging Bolt Thunderclaps might be a, a thing people try. I'm not a Palafin believer, but I, I kind of hope it does come back. <laughs> But yeah, it was a good mod. It deserves a fair shot. It was. It was a good mod. But that's really all I have to say today. You know, just had Main come on the channel. We were talking about how the format won't stay still. It, it won't stay still. It just it doesn't it doesn't want to like settle into anything. But it looks like we're starting to get there. So I wanted to talk about that today. You know, let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section down below. What Pokemon do you think is going to rise? Check out Main. You know, those links going to be in the description down below. Um, and yeah, anything you want to say? Uh, Palafin forever. Palafin forever. Have a nice one, guys. <laughs> Bye. Peace.